Good morning, it's Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Talleyton T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan, he's a corgi. He's here to say, Happy New Year. <laughs> and we're gonna talk today about a few things you might wanna do for your pets to bring in the new year. Um, one of the things we always think about at this time of year is uh, slimming down and getting healthy, and that could apply to our pets as well. So one of the things you might consider is putting your pet on a little bit of a detox, and that might include detoxing your house, getting rid of uh, toxic cleaning products, stuff that you use on the floor that could be harmful to your pets, especially cats. Um, they're very sensitive to a lot of cleaning chemicals. So you might wanna reevaluate your cleaning um, items and check with a holistic veterinarian and see if any of those are things you don't wanna use anymore. Um, another thing you might do, especially if your pet's over uh, 10 or eight or so, depending on the breed, um, is consider adding milk thistle to their diet to help keep the liver clean. The liver um, does a lot of detoxifying for the body and to support the liver with milk thistle, which comes in a tincture and a powder and a pill, a whole lot of things, um, can be a really good idea. For the kidneys, we can think about adding cranberry to the diet, um, either raw, ground up, actual cranberries, or um, there's a lovely powder of cranberries that is available from Kin and Kind on my sister's website, drjudymorgan.com. That's a great thing for kidney support. Um, again, with older animals, it's good to do this anyway, even if your pet is perfectly healthy. It really can increase their longevity and increase their health. You might think about adding some exercise to your pet's routine. Tristan walks two miles every single day. We never miss a day. And uh, he's 11 and he's got just legs as long as one of my fingers. So that's a substantial walk for this little fellow. And just because <clears throat> your pet is small or older doesn't mean that he shouldn't also get exercise. I was talking to my friend Karen about this, um, who I did an interview on the radio show we had years ago about dog dancing. Karen's a wonderful pet owner. And one of the things she does to exercise her pets is vacuum because all of her dogs are herding dogs and they love to chase the vacuum cleaner. So um, this is a benefit to you to have a cleaner house, but also the dogs just go berserk trying to herd each other as the smallest one is herding the vacuum cleaner. So that's one thing you can do. Um, you can put them through trick routines. Um, you know, I have Tristan stay and come and stay and come and run all over the house. I have this corgi kite that I launch and then get him to run with me to get it and relaunch it. And I have a very spacious, um, high ceiling house. So that's a good way for us to get exercise. Plus he's little, um, but there's many things that you can do to exercise your pet. You know, you can practice doing rally, which there's lots of information on the AKC website. Um, during COVID, the AKC website can be a huge help to fun things to do with your pet. So think about adding more exercise to your pet's routine and that might be getting you more exercise as well. If your pet is really a senior or infirmed in some way, just a couple of short walks might be, you know, all you need to commit to for uh, improving your pet's exercise for the new year. If your pet's a bit chubby, get them on a diet now, just like all the people in the world that are gonna be on a diet in the new year. But you know, being overweight is not only dangerous for your health, it's dangerous for your pet's health. And in this country, a lot of our pets are too fat. So, um, and of course some of us have breeds like corgis that just look chubby even when they're a normal weight. Um, but really keeping the weight off is important and you might reevaluate what you're feeding your pet. A lot of commercial kibbles actually add weight and then also leave your dog feeling hungry. It's that feeling people get after they eat certain kinds of food. They're like, I ate a lot of food, but I'm still starving. <laughs> That's how a pet feels when he's had a kibble rich diet. So you might think about things you can add, uh, ground burger, ground turkey, you know, uh, any other kinds of meat products, sardines um, are a great thing to add to your dog's diet and they're readily available. So, you know, look at what you can do to slim your pet down in terms of what you're feeding him. Maybe your treats are really high calorie you know, break them in half or do something like that. Um, to my knowledge, Tristan knows when he's getting a smaller treat, but when he really wants a treat, even a small one's better than none. So breaking all your treats in half can help your dog lose weight if you are unable to get sufficient exercise with him. So, um, and commit to your pet's uh, dental health. 
This is something that a lot of people really struggle with, but all you need to brush your pet's teeth is a toothbrush and a, a softer one, really, and some coconut oil, which is a really good thing. And then my sister loves to have you mix that with the dental drops that she has because they are antibacterial and they really help improve the health of the flora in the mouth. So brushing the dog's teeth even once a week can make such a huge difference. And this is something that is hard to get into your routine, but you might just add it in on, I don't know, maybe you go to work a half an hour late someday. That would be the day to brush the dog's teeth. Or maybe there's a night when you have pizza dinner for the family um, and you have an extra five minutes to brush the dog's teeth. This can make a big difference. And also for cats, um, you can do this as well. Lots of pets struggle with dental health because they really need as much care as we give our teeth and you know, pets historically don't get that. So it's not even on our radar. But toothbrushing is a good thing for your pet. Um, also a daily brushing. This improves the health of the kidney and liver um, and is also good to just stimulate the whole body. It's also a good opportunity for you to look for any kind of problems your pet may be having, you know, ticks or hot spots or, you know, areas of concern that might feel hot or sore or owie. So brushing your pet at least once a day can really improve their health and it's a good bonding exercise to brush your pet. And this pet particularly, I use a slicker brush on him a lot because he's got a really thick coat. He doesn't really like it, he tolerates it, but I have several other softer brushes I try to use, um, you know, a few times a week and only slicker him once a week so that he does experience brushing as a fun activity. And, you know, I'm not pulling out as much hair, he's not shedding as much as in the winter, but it helps him have an enjoyable experience with the grooming. And it really is fun, isn't it, Bess, to have the soft brush on your tummy? Yeah. <laughs> um, so these are just a few things you can do to help your pet have a healthier new year. Um, and do check out my sister's website. There's tons of products there. There's one last thing I wanted to mention for older pets um, in particular is to add, think about adding probiotics to their daily diet. Um, or even one week a month do it, but um, the RX Biotics are available on my sister's website. They're pretty inexpensive. A jar lasts a really long time, and it really helps with your pet's digestion. Even if you're feeding something that's not really great, just the addition of the probiotics can extend your pet's life and, and improve his immune system and improve his overall health and happiness. And so many pets I hear about now and that come to me one of their side problems is digestive issues um, from the foods and people are paying you know sixty dollars for a bag of food and it's not good food it's just ridiculous how expensive it's gotten um, and the tricky ways that they report ingredients that are not what we think they are um, and adding probiotics can really help your pet and again the little jars are not very expensive they last a really long time and that can improve your pet's digestion with whatever he's eating. Right, Tristan? So Tristan and I probably will not be up at midnight unless we wake up out of our sleep, <laughs> which we sometimes do this year, because look at it, it's dark outside. <laughs> it's not a day that makes you wanna get up and do stuff. It's kind of a day that makes you wanna nap and read a book and nap some more. <laughs> So I doubt we'll be awake uh, to ring in the new year, but tomorrow we will certainly happily ring in the new year. So everybody have a safe and healthy 2021 as we wave goodbye to 2020 and think about some ways to make your pets new year happier and healthier too. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And we will be back next week, probably on Tuesday. I think my educator job is Monday and Wednesday. We had a great time at dog school yesterday. We um, had our rally class, which was really fun because um, the teacher always breaks things down in certain ways. So yesterday we were doing lots of turns to the left and the right, and it was so fun. And it was like we were doing a drill team. People were coming across the, um, we were in a big line, like five of us, because that's all we're allowed to have in the place. And we were all walking up and spinning and then circling and then doing a turnabout and then a half turn and another half turn. And we were doing it in complete synchrony with uh, a Bouvier, a terrier, you know, a, a wire hair terrier, Tristan, 
um, a Labrador and a Golden Retriever. So we had quite a mix of dogs and it was so fun. And we came up with the idea of having a rally drill team. And since all of our dogs were orange or black, we thought we would have to have orange and black outfits to match them. Orange being this color. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really fun and his performance went well, although people had a hard time hearing it because it's a really loud building with bad acoustics um, and there's a lot of loud barking downstairs, which luckily we don't hear upstairs. Anyway, thanks for joining us today and everybody have a great new year. Oh, you love your Animal Connection cards. I'm so glad you do. They are now on my sister's website. Um, and you will be ordering them directly through uh, Judy Morgan, drjudymorgan.com. Um, of course, I'm supplying them to them and getting paid for them, but, but they're gonna be doing the marketing for them because I just had to get rid of that other company. <laughs> they were so terrible. So I'm glad you love the Animal Connection cards. Um, there's so many great things. I have a, a friend who has a corgi and she said to me, oh, he doesn't have any of the talents your dog has. And I said, every dog has a special gift. And she said hers was eating. And I started telling her, well, if he's an eating dog, there are many mm -hmm. animal connection cards I have that are activities for eating, like the shell game, which which cup is the, the treat under and things like that. And she was so excited to do something fun with her dog, like hide the treats in the living room and teach him like sofa or coffee table so that he can know where to find the treats. You know, of course they have noses and know where the treats are, but it's a way to help teach your dog language. And that's an important part of working with them. So she was so thrilled that even though it seems silly to say your dog's special talent is eating, to be able to do something fun with them. So enjoy those Animal Connection cards. And if you haven't checked them out, definitely go to drjudymorgan.com and check out those Animal Connection cards that I made. They're really 52 fun things you can do with your pet. A great time of year to get them because there's one a week and we're starting a new year. So thanks for joining us. Everybody have a great day. We'll see you next week.